We're starting a new trend here at the IMA with lunchtime lectures, a casual way for you guys to know all of the exciting things that we have going on here. Um, Ulf Meyergren and Anders Berenson are joining us um, today, and they form the Swedish uh, architecture team Vision Division, and they've been together since 2005, and they are here in Indianapolis to help address some needs that we have in 100 acres. Uh, there's no way we could have expected the huge influx of people that has uh, come to the park uh, since we opened last June. And we fig figured out very quickly that we needed a concession stand uh, out there to offer water, food, uh, and very basic needs, and also some um, restrooms that were closer to the entrances than in the visitor's pavilion. So we asked Anders and Ulf to come out here and they've been here for a few weeks and um, have some things in the works. And so please join me in welcoming uh, Vision Division. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna show some recent projects that we have been made and uh, we're also gonna show uh, some parts of what we're working with right now on the 100 acres. Um, so let's start with the first project. Okay, let's begin. Uh, this project is called the Hill Hut, and it's an extension to uh, a house for two kids, two, two Thai kids that have moved to Sweden. Uh, the client is a Swedish man that uh, had a new family, so they needed much more space. This setting, it's like a very beautiful setting. It's a southern slope down to a lake. Um, and that's like the main key ingredients to this project is that it's for kids and it's a really beautiful nature. Being a kid in Sweden means that you spend a lot of time in the nature. So that's like we wanted to make a safe base for them to explore this surrounding beautiful nature. So we have to make a steady foundation for the house. Uh, so we had to dig out a lot of earth and move it. So we created a hill uh, and we enhanced that hill with uh, some elements. For example, an outdoor cinema where you can watch movies. Uh, and you have like a hidden uh, microwave there, like a hatch, uh, and also the slope goes up directly. So from the living room you can take, at winter time you can have a, like a sled and just rush down towards the lake. And here's the layout of the house. To continue this uh, artificial hill we made, we continued with the artificial grass inside of the living room. So the, it seems like the nature goes into the house. And uh, the children's room are on the opposite side of the living room. And these are more like normal rooms. Um, but they also have some special details. For example, they have a hatchet underneath their bed so they can go down and out in a cave. So uh, in this kid room, the cave leads down to the slope, to the nature, and in this room it leads out to the, a forest patch. And uh, we also have uh, made special details for this project, like uh, a grass sofa and the movable hillocks, with the lightings. And here you see the caves underneath the children's bedroom and the living room in the middle. And it's a really complex uh, way how you move in this house. Like you move uh, into the nature, 
into the caves, up, and it's a very 3D movement, which suits the kids perfectly because they're running wild there. And here you see a diagram of the, what's real nature and fake nature. And here's the details. For example, we have uh, uh, the sound system for the outdoor uh, cinema. It's like uh, bird uh, houses that are hidden. So it will blend into the nature. And here's the living room with the views towards the lake. And uh, here's the hallway up to the old house. So the entrance from the old house to the new house is like a bit lower, so it's for kids, and it's like a ramp. You're moving into new territory, the kids' arena. And uh, here's the hatchet where young Tanarat lives. That's a kind of a dark uh, photo of uh, how it is inside of the cave when you're looking out to the forest patch. Here's the slope with the outdoor cinema. And you see Tanarat is climbing in the tree there. And also uh, the cave that leads to the forest. eating popcorn, and also it's a very nice bird lake, so you can, if you don't watch cinema, you can just look at the sea and the birds, and it's like a perfect hangout just to watch nature. So these uh, chairs are like concrete cast. Relaxing. And yeah, this got on the front page of the biggest newspaper in Sweden, so he's, <laughs> he's reading about himself inside the... Uh, so this is our latest uh, build project. Uh, it was finished about a month ago. We just photographed it before <coughs> arriving here. Uh, and it's also an extension. Uh, and it's an uh, extension to an old country house uh, outside of Stockholm. Uh, and the extension should include a master bedroom, uh, a room for clothing care, a workspace, and a space for coffee and breakfast. Uh, now, the client uh, likes uh, old Swedish houses. Uh, old Swedish houses are often red. Uh, <clears throat> it's, uh, well, it's because it was the cheapest paint to buy in Sweden. So, basically, on the countryside in Sweden, maybe 60 or 70 percent of the houses are red. And he also likes uh, mullions. Uh, and, uh, but he told us that since we're modern architects, uh, we shouldn't do a mullion house because uh, we don't like it, uh, but he likes it. And we thought that uh, it's kind of sad if, if modern architecture is so obvious that the clients uh, know what they're going to get and don't get. So we thought, like, let's give them a lot of mullions. <laughs> uh, so basically, <clears throat> uh, Here's the window uh, towards uh, the nearby lake, and it's a huge mullion window. Uh, but we wanted to try to investigate the mullion if we could do something you know, more interesting with the mullion or use it in some way. So if you go inside, uh, the mullion becomes a, becomes a big uh, shelf uh, with different functions in it. Um, so if you go to the plan, uh, you can see towards the, oh, that side that it's, that's the old house. And then you walk through a glass corridor into the new house. Uh, and the function is 
a master bedroom here. And then inside the shelves is the coffee and breakfast place. And then it's the workspace. And then it's the clothes and care room. Uh, and the clothes and care room, you work with the clothes. And then you put them inside the wardrobe. And then you take them out from the other side. Um, there's also a fireplace there. That's on the step down towards the working space. And it's in concrete for the sparks to not turn on the <coughs> yeah, house. Uh, there's also outdoor space. One is towards the south and the lake. And the other one is towards the north, uh, which is for the midsummer sun, so for the late evenings. So here you see the house again. And there's the breakfast shelf. There's the working space. There's the fireplace. And you see how he's in the clothes care room, working with the clothes, putting them into the wardrobe. Um, Here is he working and enjoying the view. Here are we, <laughs> enjoying the house. It's very nice. Uh, here you see the back side of the house and the window towards the clothing care room. And you see we have a lot of snow in Sweden too. Uh, here are some details. It's the gutters. And you see at night that uh, the two spaces are lit up. Uh, so, so the mullion kind of like changes a bit in the night, where some parts get lighter and some parts get darker. And here again is the client working uh, with a fireplace lit. And here you see the function where you put your clothes in the wardrobe and then take them out. Uh, the house is just finished, so there's some stuff to be done still at the, at the ground level. Uh, there's some fencing, they have sheep there, so. Outside, and you see the old house there with, at the back. Yeah. So there's a section of the house. Uh, you come from the old house, there's some stairs down. This is quite nice detail. They have their grandkids often visiting, so they wanted their own railing. And also since it's floor heating, we put the floor heating through the railing, so you have a warm railing while you're walking down. And then you can enter the, yeah, the outside from the glass corridor, and then the functions come in the, in the shelves. Ah, here's another drawing. And here's the drawing of the shelf. It's kind of basic. It's uh, mullions on the outside. Then it's uh, glass, uh, isolated glass. And then the shelf is on the inside, uh, right next to the mullion. So it looks like it's, uh, it's going all the way through the glass. So here's our next project. Uh, we did our graduation project in South America. We was there for about uh, six months. And uh, this is uh, one of the projects we made while being there. Uh, this is the city of Potosi. It's the highest located city in the world, uh, on 13,000 feet above sea level. Uh, and what you see on the picture there is the mountain that eats men. It um, used to be a lot of silver mining going on inside the mines. When the Spaniards came to the New World, um, they discovered that it was a really rich silver mountain, this place. So it was like a silver boom town, Potosi. Uh, and it was actually had the same size as London at one time. And there's many like, interesting facts about this city. And a really hor horrible place, too. Uh, it said that 8 million people died inside of the mines during the years. It was like an extremely horrible place. Um, anyway, there are still mining going on today, but no silver. And uh, we met some miners that worked there. And uh, they have a really horrible conditions and um, 
really low tech environment. So we wanted to do like a pro bono project for these guys. And uh, they said that the only thing they wanted to do was to please Tio. And the Tio is like a local god or a devil, actually, uh, that lives inside of the mine. And he's protecting the miners from not getting ill or getting killed. So they give some sacrifice every time they go into work inside there. They give some coca leaves and some hard liquor and cigarettes and stuff. So we decided to make a shrine inside of the mine for uh, this Tio. Um, we went in with a local guide to find a suitable spot for this uh, chapel. And we found it one there at the, yeah, do you see the symbol? And um, to make it more eloquent, this uh, chamber, we used dynamite to, uh, well, make the altar. But we were, yeah, it was our guy that made the explosions. But we saw the smoke. Um, and also, uh, it's like a really low-tech project, this. So uh, what we did was, when we have uh, made this altar, we took uh, red spray paint and started to spray paint the chamber. But we couldn't work there while the miners were having their work, so we had to work at night time. And on 13,000 feet, it gets really cold. Uh, so it was a really physical, uh, demanding project, this. Uh, it's a little bit dark images, but... Uh, uh, we, we made, like, a, a figurehead of this TU. Uh, it was supposed to be done by a sculpture, but uh, he couldn't uh, make it. And we was quite under a time pressure, so a local lady made the figure. But she was a little bit skeptical at first, but uh, she, she did it eventually. There you see a little bit better. And uh, also, uh, we added a little bit like a glitter paint. So uh, it's a really dark place and really narrow in, th in these mines. And uh, the only light is from the headlamps. So when you enter this space, you, you get like a shimmering effect. And when, when there are more miners inside of the chapel, it, it gets more glitter. So if you're alone, it's a total different experience from being many miners. It's like a night sky, almost. And we have a movie as well on our web page that we recommend you to see. It's like a, the intro party, you can say. Yeah, this is our next project. Uh, well, we're... Um, this is a, kind of a frequent client of ours uh, that came up with a, uh, a difficult question. Uh, in the 90s, he <clears throat> planted 10,000 crayfishes on his estate uh, in a stream that goes through it. So he could harvest them at, uh, at August and uh, have a crayfish party. That's a Swedish tradition. The problem was that the crayfishes didn't like his dream. So they went to the next lake, <laughs> which is not his uh, estate. And that kind of bothered him. So he asked us if we could help him in some way <laughs> to, to make the crayfishes go back. <laughs> and um, well, we started to investigate the, uh, the stream a bit and talk to some crayfish experts. And they said that the reason why the crayfishes escaped is probably the lack of 
stones, hiding places, and also calcite. Uh, so we decided to make a city for the crayfishes uh, that had all of these uh, items, hiding places, calcite, and also like a rocky bottom. Um, and then, so next picture. So here's the city. I can move on forward. Here you see a section of the city. So the city is like this: that the crayfish is li uh, lives underneath these hills, and our client walks on the city, lift up the lids, and pick crayfishes. Um, so we go back to the plan. So here's how the lids off, the tops of the hills are off, where you can pick the different crayfishes. Uh, and if you see it's a white path going through the city, that's where the client's gonna walk and pick out crayfishes. Uh, but we didn't want it to make it like too easy for him to pick the crayfishes. They should have like a decent chance to survive. <laughs> so we made some hiding places also. This is the thing in Sweden when you have like a crayfish party or when you fish crayfishes. Uh, the best thing is to, to pick them by hand. And it's like a part of a, like an event. You go in there and you pick some crayfishes. And the ones you don't pick by hand, you buy from China. So it's like, <laughs> uh, so you would maybe pick like 10 crayfishes a year. Um, and here you see some drawings of the, of the city. Um, to build this city, we needed something hard, uh, with calcite in it, but also it should be light so it could carry it to the stream. Um, so we knew this guy who had come up with a new concrete method, uh, method for casting concrete, uh, which had all these uh, ingredients. Uh, so the casting of the concrete are, you put bubble wrap, and then you put the concrete, and you put fibers in the concrete, and then you put another layer of bubble wrap, and then you kind of weld the, the edges together, and it becomes like a concrete uh, uh, fabric. Uh, so we put this fabric over different, like, basketballs and stuff, and then we make these hills. Uh, and then we also reinforced the part where the client's going to walk. Uh, so that's the white part. So here is the structure laying on land. We made this this summer, and here it's in the water. So here you can see uh, the white path where you walk on, and you see some holes. That's for the crayfishes to get into the structure or get out from the structure. And we put it some. We got some crayfishes from the guy who has all the crayfishes. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice guy. Uh, so we put about 50 crayfishes there to, you know, make a star of the city. Uh, and here, here it's how it's work. Uh, oh, there's also lights in these hills where you can turn on when it's time to pick the crayfishes. Uh, so you lift up the lid, you pick some crayfishes. And uh, here's uh, a close-up of the, of the concrete, which is kind of beautiful. I have a close-up of a crayfish. Uh, and we built this this summer, so we will see if it works or not, but we put in 50 crayfishes, and there's been a heron there constantly after this. And herons eat crayfishes. So I think they're still there. And then we, I mean, we will take a couple of years to see if it's going to be more crayfishes or if it's going to be, yeah. We'll see. Well, uh, for the concession stand, uh, we kind of thought that uh, you invited us not just to make a small concession stand, to, but to make some nice piece of architecture also. Uh, so, how do you do like quality architecture? Uh, and we thought, uh, let's look at some other branch, how they do it. So we look at uh, how chefs do it. Our great chefs. They use local materials. They go straight back to the source. Uh, why, you know, laser chefs, they buy pre-made products and they kind of microwave them. And we wanted to do the same thing with architecture. And you can compare architecture pretty, pretty much to, to what a chef do. 
Uh, if um, uh, in architecture you can go straight back to the source and you can start to refine the material yourself, or you can buy pre-made products, and then you're kind of locked in these pre-made products. So we wanted to see like what is the best piece of nature we can take from Indiana, and how can we refine that? Uh, so we find a tree, uh, a really nice poplar tree, which is also the state tree of Indiana, and it also has it has, it has very good like uh, it's nice for carving. The Indians used it for carving canoes, and it's also it, it has a good strength. Uh, so we want to use this tree um, and service. Serve it as like a, a chef would do it in the most like gentle way possible, like in respect for the tree or like in respect for the piece of meat yes, the chef has found. So this is the tree. Uh, we want to use the tree as a beam. Um, and from that beam, we will take away parts, uh, which is the red parts. Uh, and we will use them for different functions under the beam, which will be the green parts. So we will carve out some parts there, for example, and use them for swings or for tables or for construction elements. And we can also use the bark, actually, because it's, if you, take, you, you need to take away the bark of the tree or else it will be rotten. But when you take away the bark, you can make a facade material of it. And then we will use that bark here. So we will use pretty much only the tree to build this uh, concession stand. And if you look at it, it's a, it's a hammock. It's the concession stand. There's some swings for the kids. There's some places to sit underneath the crown with a little bit of shadow, and you can hang lights from there and so on. So we, right in the middle of developing this project. But uh, oh, here's the placement of the tree also. Uh, we thought this would be a good place somewhere in the crossroads where most of the people walk. Um, so we think it, it's going to end up there. Um, and here's how the tree might look. And you can see here. It, it is a massive tree. It's, it's this big. But also, at the very bottom, it's something like this. So it's a massive, nice tree. And here you see also the bark from the tree, that we use it here. Uh, yeah, so that's what we're working on right now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>